Hello, and welcome to Esther's Gardening Adventures. I'm Esther, and today is garden tour day. I'm looking forward to showing you everything that's changed. We have some plants that are showing fruit and flowers that weren't before, and the garden's really filling out in many places. So let's go see. But before I go through the garden, let me mention really quick that I am actually going to be traveling next week. I am going to be going to a silent retreat for a week and taking a road trip. Um, it's a couple states south of us taking a road trip uh, as well where I get to see botanical gardens, a bird preserve or a bird park, I think, where they breed and, and help keep um, alive protected and rare species of birds. And I'm gonna try to get as much footage as I can other than the silent retreat where obviously all technology is going to be put in my suitcase and in my trunk and left there. <laughs> but um, just thought I'd mention that because you might hear me mention, um, you know, plans for being out of town. Um, and that's, that's what the deal is. I'm gonna start off with just an overall look at this part of the garden so you can get a sense of how it looks. I still have the plastic up. Um, I may take it down this weekend. If you wanna know more about why I have that there, you can check out uh, the video I posted a couple days ago. The container bed of flowers is just lush right now. And even though I have cicadas flying every which way still, they're definitely on their way down. As soon as I say that, they get louder, stop it. <laughs> My zinnias are in full flower now, the pink ones. These are from seeds I saved last year. The basil has shot up like crazy. Even the lemon basil is getting pretty tall. Definitely gonna harvest some of that for a tomato. Well, we don't have tomatoes yet, but for a cucumber thing maybe from the store. Look guys, we have a pollinator. So excited to see the pollinator. The bee balm was looking a little faded for a while. I think the heat kind of made it unhappy, but it looks like it's getting ready to start putting out flowers. And we have a beautiful red zinnia. Since we last filmed, I have added some additional flowers to the bed from, the, from uh, a box store. The salvia is gorgeous. And our large zinnias are very close to being in full bloom. Very, very close. You can see one has sprouted right there. Oh, I can't wait to see how they look. I bet they're gonna be gorgeous. For the coxcomb, this will give you an idea of what it's gonna look like. It's already starting to sort of get that corally, peachy color on it. And these heads will develop into like a brain-like, beautiful structure that'll go this way. I need to pull it over so that corner gets more sun. That's a nice thing about having container beds. You can move stuff around, <laughs> which I've had to do quite a bit of because these tomatoes are starting to grow out. The blanket flowers are coming and going. They don't last quite as long as zinnias. And this plant is a surprise. This plant was supposed to be a cosmos plant from seeds I got from a friend, but it turns out that it is Tulsi Holy Basil, which made me super excited, you guys, because I had wanted to grow Tulsi Holy Basil this year. I had it last year. Um, this is winter sown, volunteer, um, and it, came on its own and as you can see there's little pollinators love it they absolutely love this thing our calendula is fully in bloom now I need to harvest some more and I planted a little beautiful I forgot what this plant was called little white vining flower to help kind of fill out the space where there was that gap in our garlic slash flower bed the borage is blooming oh such pretty flowers. As is the clam. Now during the heat of the day, the clam kind of puckers up. We have a little bit of water from our rain gauge from a couple days ago. I'll give them a little more water. But clams seem to be doing pretty good. They're, they're flowering, although those little petals definitely curl in during the heat of the day. It's around noon now. And 
check out the coxcomb here. Beautiful, beautiful flowers. Here is our single seed challenge eggplant, which is bushing out nicely. And the jalapeno pepper plant that I overwintered is starting to produce fruit. So by the time I come back from my trip, I should have some jalapenos to harvest. That one's bent down. I probably ought to give it some support, don't you think? Yeah, I need to do that. Give it some support. The peppers in the pepper bed, the main pepper bed, are going gangbusters. They're going fast. And I planted, I transplanted the savory, uh, which is a celery-like plant that I got from a seed swap, a seedling exchange. I planted it here in the bed with these, and I've given it a bamboo pole so that if it needs to be supported or trellised, that is already next to it and it won't hurt the root system. I also put up um, some netting for um, our Christmas lima beans. They've been kind of stunted because they were eaten by groundhogs in the backyard when they were in the open to winter sowing jugs. But um, it looks like at least one of them is starting to catch. <laughs> Here are my more of my pepper plants, <clears throat> and I planted some parsley. Uh, the groundhogs ate all of the parsley in the backyard that I had in a container, so I bought three more plants. This is one of them. I'm going to plant the other two between these guys, or I might even plant it here, which is where we had the beets before. Um, and I'm planning on growing, I need to cover this, in fact you can see the soil is drying out. I'm planning on growing beans here, and possibly one of the tomato plants that uh, a person didn't pick up. There's another eggplant over there that I planted while the beets were still there. And this thing in the container is an elderberry uh, plant, elderflower uh, plant. It bushes out, it has canes, and I need to figure out where to put it. I'm going to put it in a bigger pot for this year, and the next year I need to give it a, a more permanent home. Look at how much these tomatoes have grown. And what's most exciting about it is we have baby tomatoes. Oops. It also solves the mystery of which tomato plant is which. This is the cherry tomato. These were both mysteries. This is the cherry tomato plant. And the other one on the other end, I'll show you in a minute, has a pear-shaped fruit. Our Rutgers tomato plant is also starting to produce little baby tomatoes. And here are the yellow pear tomatoes on what was a mystery plant that we now know as yellow pear. The Roma tomato plant is also producing fruit, but I am having a slight problem with aphids that I need to come out with a, um, a water hose and just hose them off. <laughs> and our squash have started flowering. Looks like some critter got in there. I don't know if that's a bad one or not. Hmm. I will have to double check that. But the cucumber plants are doing good. I have not thinned them down yet. I need to do that today, but they're blossoming. Oh, they're coming along nicely. And I definitely need to trim back the leaves on my uh, on my zucchini squasher. This is a concern of zucchini because it's starting to get too big and you don't need all the leaves. You just need the ones up near where the fruit are. So the other news for this bed is I planted some cone flower over here and they're coming along fine. As is my Lakota squash. Those dead blossoms are fine. Um, I haven't had any female uh, blossoms on this yet, so I'm not worried about pollinating just yet. And look, our one of our sunflowers is starting to put out a flower bud. So pretty. Can't wait. This is the autumn sunflower variety. 
The tomatoes over here are still somewhat stunted compared to the others. And I definitely, before I leave, I'm gonna have to trim back these tree branches. And the car that was parked in front of here just moved. Oh, I'm about to come out and do that now then. Cause I didn't want it falling on their car. Yes, all right, let's make that happen. In the backyard, the other sunflower has been eaten by or killed by groundhogs who have now taken off, taken over living under the deck. But although they've nibbled on the sunflower down here, some you can see, it's still alive. I'm doing pretty well. This is a mammoth sunflower. So it hasn't started putting out a head yet. I'm, I suspect it needs to get a little taller, but hey, I'm glad that one of the sunflowers has survived thus far, still keeping my fingers crossed, because you never know. But it seems to be a happy place for spiders, and that's okay with me. <laughs> I have yet to do anything with this patch. Um, in fact, I could just pull this out probably. I'll do that later. But as you can see, uh, kale definitely needs, definitely needs to be harvested. It's pretty tall. Um, and it is being eaten by cabbage worms because the cabbage moths have gotten in there. And in fact, I saw a cabbage moth stuck to the tool the, the other day. Um, <laughs> so I need to get in there and harvest the kale and put it in a nice soup. Raspberries are doing really well. You know, we took down that tree that was on the other side of uh, this bed here. And I think it's yielded a lot more sun that has really helped the raspberries take off. They've never been this tall. Last year they were not anywhere near this size. You can see these are the size of the branches last year. And if you watched my video, you saw me harvesting the raspberries, but look how beautiful they are. Oh guys, I think we have a strawberry peeking through. Oh, if I can get to it, if I can get around the thorns, I'm gonna totally harvest that. <laughs> Yay. All right, I'm gonna get that strawberry. Sugar snap peas are still producing uh, lots of vegetables. Looking as good as ever. Okay, Mr. Cicada, get off me. And the bush beans are also getting pretty tall. I did not thin them out. So we will just see how they do with not being thinned out. And uh, the sugar snap peas keep leaning, they keep leaning this way so um i'll probably harvest a good set before i go on my trip this week next week and um pull them when i get back and if you remember the uh, maltese cross flowers well we have a couple more volunteers over here which is really neat. So I think it'd be completely feasible to do a whole row of them next year if they don't do that on their own, in fact. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you aren't already a subscriber, please consider doing so. And make sure you have the bell set so you get alerts whenever I post new content. And otherwise, I'll see you next time.